14. Okay, once again, if I move too quickly through something, you guys will let me know. First page is on trapezoids, second page is on um, kites. So if I can have you guys all right on the uh, top uh, and we will come up with a, um, a family tree of all quadrilaterals on Monday, but traps and kites are not, 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 not parallelograms. Okay, so sorry that parallelogram does not look like a parallelogram, but traps and kites are not um, parallelograms. And so what this now entails is, again, we have one side of the family tree being um, parallelograms and underneath that we, we talked about a rhombus, we talked about a, a rectangle, those two guys got married um, and then there's a square underneath those two. So that's like our family tree on the left. On the right, um, quadrilaterals are just four-sided figures. So kites and trapezoids are all, happen to be quadrilaterals, but they are not parallelograms. The, if you think of the definition of a parallelogram, you need, um, how many sets of sides do you guys need to be parallel in order to be a parallelogram? How many sets of sides? Okay, you need at least, well, there's only two sets of sides. You need both sets of sides to be um, parallel. Can you guys look at the trapezoid? When you draw a trapezoid, you're only drawing how many sets of sides parallel in a trapezoid? Okay, and, and you know, my daughter was just doing something on, what is it called, Think Central the other day, um, and she had, no, I excel. And she had to uh, classify things as trapezoids or not, and she's just like, I keep getting it wrong. And I think she kept thinking it was two, um, it was the parallelograms. And I kept having to, or not kept having to, I had to correct her and just to say, you know, it's one set of sides that are parallel. So if you guys can underline that, um, that's one of the uh, things that make it not a parallelogram. It only has one pair of parallel sides. Okay, so the parallel sides, they do have a special name for it. Okay, the top and the bottom um, that happen to be parallel uh, are called bases. Okay, so you have bases and then you have legs of a trapezoid and the legs are the non-parallel sides. Okay, then we also refer to things just like with isosceles triangles as base angles. So I want you guys to picture, since we already have in mind the, um, the base angles of an isosceles triangle, it's really easy for me to picture, and I, uh, I'm going to draw it, but you guys don't have to draw this. Um, it's really easy for me to picture a triangle being formed if I just extend those legs out further. And so if I have an isosceles uh, trapezoid where the legs are congruent to each other, then the base angles are the angles that are formed by those legs down here. And those we, we will see are congruent to each other as well. Okay, so base angles and diagonals are also congruent in, in an isosceles trapezoid. So that's only true if you know that the two sides are congruent, the two legs are congruent. Okay, the new theorem that is important with um, trapezoids is the one that you guys see down below there. Okay, so trapezoid mid-segment theorem Okay, and so a mid-segment is like the mid-segment that we studied in a triangle. Okay, the mid-segment is the segment that, um, go ahead and highlight BE, and then highlight the word mid-segment, and then above uh, mid-segment, the word mid-segment, can you guys write um, BE, segment BE, so that you have that in your notes? Okay, so in this picture, you guys have the, the bases are the two sides that are parallel on a trapezoid, so AF and CD. And then you guys also happen to have halfway to AF and, and CD, there's a, a third line that is parallel to the bases. And that also happened to, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of trace this out, that also happens to be um, cutting across the midpoint of the legs of the trapezoid. So B is the midpoint. I know that because those two segments are marked congruent as well as E is uh, the midpoint because these two segments are congruent on the legs. Okay, if all of this is true, then I, I'm, I'll make it a little bit easier than what you guys see over on the left. I'm going to label um, some of these sides with variables. So let's say you guys know one of the sides, one of the bases is X. The other one is Y. Okay, the mid segment itself, BE, I'll just call BE. And then, so I'll say BE, which is the mid segment. 
Okay, there, th there's a relationship between the mid segments and then those sides. Okay, so uh, if we know that the bases that are parallel to the mid segments, if we know their lengths, we would add the two lengths together and divide it by two. Okay, so x plus y equals two. And uh, Matthew, uh, go ahead and just do it on a line sheet of paper. Someone else had this the same issue. Oops. So if, you're, if you don't have the uh, notes in front of you guys, you can write the formula out and sketch a quick picture of the trapezoid. And then the above, you guys will have um, references to this. This is page 14 for those of you guys looking. So again, if you um, don't have the packet in front of you, I would just write out that formula that I just put in a box. Okay, and I want, I want you guys to see that this is true with the example below, even though it's not, um, it's not a formal example. I wanted you guys to see this. So if you take a look at, um, at the picture down below here, and I'll just kind of use this as an example. Uh, can I have you guys look at the two parallel bases? Can you guys type into the chat, what are the bases of the trapezoid that you see below here? What's the segment name of the bases? What's the bases in this picture? Okay, AD is one of them. And if you guys can do private chat as well, AD is one of them and BC is the other one. They're the ones that are parallel to each other. So we're gonna find the length of B BC. Okay, so I'm gonna do this just above here just to show uh, an example on the mid segment. The length of BC um, plus the length of the other base AD divided by two should be the length of the mid segment. Okay, so the mid segment, mid segment I'm just gonna call a different, um, a different name. So if you guys can find the coordinate point negative two, one, that's halfway between A and B. If you guys can find the coordinate point three, one, that's halfway between C and D. Those are uh, midpoints. And if you guys take a look at the length of that, the length of that happens to be, um, and we'll call this variable X and Y. So let's say X, Y. Okay, so mid segment is exactly halfway um, to each one of the parallel bases, it's parallel to the bases. And if we take a look at the values that you have in the picture, um, we see that the length of XY is five. The length of BC happens to be um, three. And the length of AD happens to be seven. So is that true? When I plug everything in, is that true? Okay, yeah, so you guys can see seven plus three is 10 divided by two is five. Um, so I just, even though that wasn't part of the example, I just thought using those coordinate points, you guys can see um, that that relationship is true. Um, so on the actual example itself, they're giving you guys the vertices and they're saying show that ABCD is a trapezoid and determine whether it's an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is in order to show that it's a trapezoid, I'm going to make sure that one set of sides is parallel. So what's the slope of BC? We don't actually have to write it out because we should all know the slope of BC, right? Can you guys type into the chat? What's the slope of BC? Okay, it's a flat horizontal line. There is zero slope or, or the slope is zero. Um, what's the slope of AD? Okay, also zero. So these three dots like that in math are called therefore. Therefore, BC is parallel to AD. So we have one set of lines that are parallel. Okay, the other part of it is that they want me to show it's an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, what do you guys think we do? I, I kind of gave you guys a, um, the lead on that part, but how would you guys show that it's an isosceles uh, trapezoid? We would have to show that the two legs are congruent, very good. And in order to, to show the two legs are congruent with coordinate points, I see someone said, um, prove AB is congruent to CD. And so you guys can use one of two things. You can use distance formula, which I, I think I'll review with you guys here, or you guys can um, picture the triangle that appears here and use um, Pythagorean theorem on that as well. And that essentially is your uh, distance formula that we've proven that before. So let's say you guys find the length of AB using distance formula. Okay, here's the coordinate points for AB up above there. We're going to do the change in y squared, so 3 minus a negative 1 squared, plus um, the change in x squared, so negative 1 minus a negative 3, 
quantity squared. A double negative is a positive, so you guys have four squared is 16, plus negative one um, plus, this is a double negative, so plus three is two squared is four. So you square first, do the addition subtraction, square each one of those individually, find the sum of that, and we get that's the square root of 20. And then I wanted to do this just to make sure you guys remember how to simplify a radical that's going to be increasingly important into second semester into uh, algebra two trig or even just algebra two. So if you factor out 20, you guys get that it's um, four and five. Some people just view four as um, the square root of four is two and uh, go from there. And then my answer is two square root of five. Or you break it apart and you guys think of four as two, two and five. And then I think I gave you guys my thing about uh, it's a house and then uh, if, if it's dangerous, you need a partner in order to leave. And then one of your partner dies in the process. And um, so you can take one two out, one of the two dies, and then the five gets stuck inside because it doesn't have a... Does that sound familiar or do I sound crazy to you guys? Have I told you guys that story? Okay, so just making sure that I, I explained that um, without uh, before. So it doesn't sound like it's, it's too crazy. Um, so four is two, two, and five. Again, if a two has a partner, it can leave. And then one dies in the process, the other one stays. And we're going to do a lot more practice with radicals next um, next semester. So CD, because um, that's going to be part of trig, it's going to be part of right triangles. Uh, so CD, if we do the same exact thing with CD, um, why don't you guys just make sure that it makes sense to you guys. Go ahead and do it. You can check your work with my work, but go ahead and independently do that one, the, the uh, distance formula for it. If you guys can verify that you did get that they were the same answers and your conclusion is over on the right, which I uh, summarized right there. If you guys can just make sure you have that all before I move on. And then if you are ready, go ahead and type in yes in the chat so I know I can move on. And if something that doesn't make sense, you don't have to type in yes, you guys can type in a question. Okay, so lots of yeses coming through. Don't see any questions, so I'm going to move on. Um, there's a uh, there's a property that's missing or a um, characteristic that's missing from question one. And in order to answer this question, you need that. So can you guys go ahead and mark off that this is, in fact, an isosceles trapezoid? Without that information, we actually wouldn't have enough information to solve for what they want, and they want us to find the measure of angle D. Okay, so if um, they're asking us for the measure of angle D, then um, we would have to know uh, a couple things before we can answer what the angle D is equal to. Um, so if it's an isosceles trapezoid, you guys are working with the fact that you have um, a set of parallel lines here. Okay, this is a trapezoid um, or a transversal that goes through those parallel lines. 
Um, so in order for you to solve for the bottom angle um, down here, angle C, uh, what property would you guys have to know in order for it to have, um, in order for you guys to calculate that angle measure? And yes, um, someone asked in order for you to know that it's an isosceles uh, trapezoid, that was that should have been given to us. So let me clarify: the problem should have began with parallel lines and that the legs are congruent to each other. Otherwise, we can't answer the question of finding angle D. Okay, so good. Even if it wasn't isosceles, by the way, I could solve for angle C just simply knowing SSI. Okay, these angles are same side interior angles. So therefore, they must be supplementary. Can you guys type into the chat, what is the measure of angle C? Good, I think just double check your math. I, some, some of you guys put 45, but 55 um, plus 125 is 180. Now, the reason why we wouldn't have been able to answer the question if it wasn't isosceles is that this is a separate transversal. So what happens across this is um, it, it means that these two angles are related to each other and not necessarily that these two angles or these two angles are related to each other. And the reason being, we only know that the relationship between angle C and angle D, if, uh, which are base angles, if these legs are congruent to each other. So again, think back to an isosceles triangle. We only know base angles are congruent only if the triangle itself or the trapezoid in this case is, is um, isosceles. So knowing that it is an isosceles uh, trapezoid, what is the measure of angle D equal to? What must it be equal to if it's a base angle? Okay, good. It must be congruent to angle C, which is 55 degrees. And that then also makes the top angle, angle B, 125, because it's same side interior angle to D. Okay, that you guys can make an assumption for. So in uh, question two, you guys have that, um, we do have in another set of isosceles uh, trapezoid. Uh, we know that because of the sides being five and five. Can I have you guys answer the question, what is the measure of angle L? Okay, we're gonna quickly move through this one. It's same side interior angles, so 140. Just double check your math on that. It should add up to 180, good. Okay, so now um, we're gonna work with the fact that this is a trapezoid, nothing to do with um, it being isosceles, but you are given that M and N are the midpoints of the legs. Um, so that just simply means that HM is congruent to ML. You don't know that HM is congruent to the other side, but you know that JN is congruent to NK. So I changed the markers so that the left segments are congruent to each other, the right segments are congruent to each other. We don't know that they're all congruent to each other because we don't know that that's an isosceles triangle. Okay, so they're midpoints of the legs, not of all the legs. Okay, so then given that, you guys also know uh, if that's true, then basically if that's the mid segment, all of these lines are parallel to each other. Okay, and so the bases themselves, they're giving you guys certain information that the base is 32, that um, the other base, the other base parallel to the top base is 60. And so your mid segment, think of middle, is going to be the average of the sum of those two bases. Can I have you guys find what you think MN is equal to? It's the average of the two bases. And if it doesn't make sense to you guys what to do, let me know, but very good that correct answers are coming through. I'll wait a little bit longer for those of you guys who um, want to look at what I wrote out for the work. And it's very similar to calculating midpoints um, and kind of if you want a way to remember it, mid segment, middle. Um, so yes, the answer is 46. And sometimes similar to a midpoint, they give you guys um, other values instead. So in question four, HJ is 18, HJ, HJ is 18, um, MN is 28. This time they give you guys the average and then you don't know what LK is. So we're gonna set up an equation, 18 plus X divided by two, the average of the bases is equal to the mid segment. And then we'll cross multiply and I'll have you guys come up with what you think the answer is.
Good. Those of you guys coming through with the answer, that's correct. Keep typing. So I know you guys know what to do. Okay, I think just double check your subtraction. It should be 38. Very good. So average, uh, the mid segment is the average of the two bases. That's all you're applying. So that's, that completes trapezoids, you guys. We're gonna now move um, into the other quadrilateral that is not a parallelogram, which is a kite. Okay, so go ahead and I'll leave it for a moment just in case some of you guys are wrapping up that page 14, and then we're going to move on to page 15. And for this one, I might just pick a couple examples to do. We might not do all of them. Okay, so two things are true. So again, um, maybe just as a, a, a point of emphasis, uh, you guys can circle kites and then say not parallelogram in big words on your on the top of your um, paper so that you guys are reminded it does not have properties of a parallelogram and it has its own set of, set of properties. Okay, one of which is that you know it uh, it's a kite if you have two pairs of consecutive sides being congruent. So let's go ahead and underline um, or highlight underline two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. If you are writing your notes out, you wanna say that that's the definition of a kite. It's a quadrilateral with two sets of um, congruent sides. And in order to mark what that means, I would uh, in a different color, if you have it, that's one set of consecutive sides being congruent, meaning that they, the side right next to it is congruent to the previous side. And then you see that that is also true on this one. These two sides are right next to each other and they, have, they happen to be congruent to each other. Notice that none of the sides are parallel to each other. Okay, so no, no sets of sides are parallel. You have another uh, property being, so that's the definition. The other property you guys have is that similar to a rhombus, what kind of angle is formed, you guys? What do you think is formed in the middle by the diagonals? What do the diagonals happen to do? They form right angles, so a, a big, um, aspect of kites is that you're going to work with right triangles and that's that's true with squares and with rhombus as well okay perpendiculars are or the um, diagonals are perpendicular to each other and then what's unique to a kite that that um, is not true of um, parallelograms is that you only have one set of opposite angles that are congruent and i want you guys to visualize um, the picture that you have on the right Okay, if you guys look at the picture that you have on the right, which set of opposite angles are congruent to each other? R and N or M and P? Like just look at the picture to see which one appears to be um, congruent to each other. Do you guys see how the, um, the angles that form, the uh, sides that form angle R are super long and stretched out, whereas N is shorter. So these openings across from each other are not congruent to each other. R is not congruent to N. They are also, um, if we think about congruent triangles and we're trying to prove, prove congruent triangles, this triangle is not congruent to this triangle. Even though they're isosceles, angle N and angle R are not congruent to each other. However, if you guys look at these two triangles, the kite split the other way, are those two triangles congruent to each other? That would have been the proof. Are those two triangles congruent to each other? Um, let me highlight one of them. So is that yellow, um, is that yellow triangle congruent to the triangle below that? Okay, so if I were to prove it, I would say, sure, the pink sides are congruent to each other. The blue sides are congruent to each other. We got reflexive property going through Rn so those two triangles, top and bottom, are side, 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 right? So if that's true, then uh, that means angle M is congruent to angle P. And that's how you guys are going to remember it. Using the fact that those two triangles, top and bottom, are congruent to each other, then therefore angle M must be congruent to angle P. Okay, so then uh, this is really just application, trying to figure out what different angle measures are. Okay, so you guys got a kite here. Notice that um, this angle and this angle aren't congruent to each other. So then you know that X and Z must be congruent to each other. So another property um, 
that you should know of is that how many degrees uh, is a quadrilateral, given that it's made up of two triangles. Okay, any quadrilateral, if you add up all of the angles, must be equal to 360. Because if you guys look at any quadrilateral, it could be divided into two triangles, and each one of those triangles is 180 degrees. So together, 180 plus 180 is 360. Now, let's say that you guys are trying to figure out angle Z, and someone already figured out the answer to this, but let's say you guys know that these are opposite angles to each other, so they must be equal to each other. So I'm going to call them both X. Okay, so what I would do with this problem is I know that uh, angle W and angle Y add up to be 140 degrees, right? So I can take 360 minus 140 and get 220. How would I then take 220 to figure out what each one of those angles are equal to or what angle Z is equal to? What do I have to do with that angle? Okay, very good. 2x is equal to 220, or some of you guys said divide by 2. Very nice. 110 degrees is the correct answer. Okay, another uh, thing that we're going to be looking at is the side lengths, diagonals and the side lengths. And this one, they want us to find the uh, side length of BC. So if we take a look and remember that kites form right angles they're perpendicular, the diagonals are perpendicular, then you have a, uh, that, that rectangle or that triangle that they want us to find the length of BC for is a right triangle. And so um, you're going to get really familiar with what we call Pythagorean triples, but one of the Pythagorean triples is a three, four, five triangle where five is the hypotenuse. The other one is gonna be five, 12. Does anyone know what the length of X is equal to or memorized it? It's called a Pythagorean triple because using Pythagorean theorem, I can figure out what that is. Okay, and then some people have gone to just memorize it because it's a very uh, popular one. So let's say you do, do know that's a 5, 12, 13 right triangle. That was the length of BC. You could just write 13. Or if you don't know, what you guys would do is, is um, X is your hypotenuse. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. C happens to be the hypotenuse, which is X. And then you got five squared plus 12 squared. So X squared equals 25 plus 144. X squared equals 169. Square root both sides, 169 is a perfect square. It's 13. So X is uh, equal to 13. So that's the long way of doing it. Some people have gone, especially into next semester, um, gone to memorize these Pythagorean triples. Three, four, five is another uh, popular one, famous one. Okay, on this one, we're going to answer uh, some of the questions. Oh, actually, these should be fast to go through. Um, JRK, you guys, what's the measure of JRK? Can I, everybody type it into the chat? Good, those of you guys typing it in. Two diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Very nice. Therefore, this must be equal to 90. OK, um, I have RJ is 3, RK is um, 10. Find the measure of JK. Can I have you guys find the measure and type it into the chat? Wait, what do you think the measure is? And we're going to leave our answers in um, simplified radical form, uh, since 109 uh, can't be simplified any further. Uh, there's no values that go into 109 prime. Um, you guys would leave your answer as such, 109. Okay, so Pythagorean theorem on that one. Number three, if you guys have GHJ is equal to 90, so I want you guys to figure this one out without me telling you. So GHJ is equal to 90 degrees. GKJ is 110 degrees. Can you guys figure out the measure of HGK? Go ahead and do so and let me know what the answer is. If you got a one, if you got one thirty, can you double check your answer again? Mm 
If you got 100, can you double check your answer again? So 110 plus 90 is 200. 360 minus 200 is, so 360 minus 200 is 180. But that happens to be the sum of two angles that are congruent to each other. So don't, don't forget to, um, sorry, did I put 180? It should be 160. And then don't forget to divide by two. If you guys do so, then you guys get the measure of each one of these angles right here which um, is 80 degrees is the correct answer. Okay, so for number four, you guys have HJ is equal to seven. Um, HG is, find HG. That one, can you guys type it into the chat? What is HG equal to? Okay, so good that you, many of you guys are saying they must be congruent to each other. They're consecutive sides of a kite that are congruent. So the correct answer is seven. Okay, for five, um, I'd like you guys to write this and go as far as you guys can with this. Okay, I'll leave you guys to, um, to do this one on your own and then uh, type into the answer in simplified radical form, what's the correct answer to this? Good, Christian. And Jaden, just simplify that square root as much as you can. Very nice, you guys. Now simplifying the radical. For those of you guys who typed in your answer, that's correct. One way to check your work also as you're simplifying the radicals. Oh, and uh, if you didn't get 24, you might want to double check if you, or maybe that person just typed it in incorrectly, um, that you uh, set the, the C value to be seven squared because that's your hypotenuse. Okay, so that person did just make a typo. Um, but in your, your final answer, when you're uh, breaking apart 24, 24 happens to be four and six, four is two and two, and six is two and three. So when we're figuring out what to take out, only one set of two has a partner. So only one of the twos get, will get to leave the radical. The other one dies. The other two don't have partners, so they stay stuck inside. We remultiply them. So the correct answer was two that I circled is on the outside, radical six. One way to check whether or not your radical is simplified correctly is if you square the number on the outside, two, two squared is four, then re-multiply with the number on the inside, we should get back to 24. Also, the number on the inside, the six, should no longer have any partners, like two and three. So if, for example, if you guys had like radical eight still left over, that's a common algebra one mistake, like they'll, uh, break apart everything. And then when they remultiply, they have like radical eight. Eight technically still has a pair of twos in it. So we know that we didn't fully complete the, the simplification process. Okay, you guys, so on our last question, um, can I have you figure this one out? Now we've done a couple of these ones and this one doesn't work out uh, entirely to be a nice answer. Okay, good. Those of you guys typing it in, that's correct. And I'd like to see, um, as all of you guys type in an answer for this one, let me see what you guys get for it. Good, still looking good, the one typing it in. Just as a heads up, while I'm waiting for more people to type in their answers, um, the, Eventually, when you guys are doing your homework for all of this, you're going to write your answers not as decimals, but as um, simple, 
simplified radical form. Um, so make sure that when you guys do so that um, you're doing you're simplifying the radical for the kite problems like we just did when you're using Pythagorean theorem. Um, I don't know what happened with a, a, a few of your calculations here, so I'm just going to go over how to do this problem. When you guys add the 52 and the 95 to get 147, uh, if you subtract that from um, if you subtract that from 360, you guys should get 213. Okay, 213 happens to be the sum of uh, G and J, which are congruent to each other. So if I want the exact answer of that, I'm gonna divide that by two. Dividing 200 by two is 100. Um, and then dividing 13 by two, you guys get six and a half. So 106.5 would be the correct answer for each one of the angles. HGK is 106.5. Okay, so in the chat, can you guys type if that makes sense to you guys? Yes or no? 